So, you want to learn about Mag DK, huh? Well, the Mag DK is not for the faint of heart. It's one of the hardest classes to master in ESO, but once you do finally master it, it's by far the most fun, bar none. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that I know about playing the Mag DK, tips from a 7 year old veteran, the very basics all the way up to the advanced mechanics of the Magic of DK. And we're starting right now. Welcome back guys, and before we get into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for funding my crippling addiction to bottle caps. Guys, if you have a 1vx clip you want to be featured in PvP Top 5 series, guess what? I have that. Please submit your clips to Horcrux ESO at Yahoo.com. There is a how-to video down in the description. If you need a little bit more clarification, there's also a link to our community discord if you guys be interested in joining and one last thing before we actually get into the bread and butter of the video this is going to be very unscripted as with all my content i feel that scripted content makes it very disingenuous so you guys are going to see a lot of muff ups it's going to happen i just feel that i need to be relatable to you guys because let's be real we're all in this together we're all trying to learn about pvp and make eso great again so let's go well, congrats on making it this far in the video. So the next question you need to ask yourself is why should you even play Mag DK? Is the Mag DK for you? Well, the Mag DK is a brawler build. So what I mean by that is the Mag DK is up in your face. Here's my dick. Just take it type of class. It's very high sustained pressure. But the downsides of the Magic DK is that it's lack of mobility. But what it makes up for in its lack of mobility is its tankiness and the type of builds you get away with. The DK is one of the most fun hybrid classes out in ESO right now, and it's bar none my favorite class to play in ESO. Okay, to start, I'm just going to assume you guys have a little bit of knowledge of the DK, so I'm not going to go through every single skill in the DK skit because that alone would be an hour-long video. So what we're going to do instead is focus on some of the abilities that make a DK a DK and see how they play into the kit. Next, we're going to go over the passives. Some of the DK passives are the strongest by far in ESO and then next we'll go over some of the basic combat tips and tricks from a basic tutorial to line up your burst to an advanced tutorial as well. Okay so the mag DK is a pretty difficult class to master and the reason it's difficult to master is because you're reliant on your buff and your debuff management. If you start letting your buffs fall off or not keeping track of your debuffs on your opponent you're, you're going to get squished really fast. So let's go over some of the iconic skills in the DK's kit. First we have Burning Embers. This is an amazing ability because it applies a lot of dot pressure and if you reapply it or the effect falls off or gets purged, you also get a burst seal. This allows you to keep up the pressure on your front bar when you're going offensive. Next is Power Lash. It's very similar. So when you target a off balance or immobilize or stun enemy, you have a Power Lash which also gives you a heal on your front bar as well. So you kind of get the trend of the DK. The best offense is a really good defense. Okay, so one of the next skills I want to go over is Burning Talons. Now this wasn't really used all last patch, but now with the Power Lash changes, Talons is an absolute must on any DK build. So it immobilizes your enemy, proccing the off balance stance effect. And now since the Power Lash changes, you can have infinite Power Lashes. So you can't look like a ballerina the entire time when you're pressuring someone and you're healing again and again and again. It's absolutely amazing. And probably the most devastating CC in the game, DKs have access to Fossilize. So what Fossilize does, not only is it a unblockable, undodgeable stun, but it also immobilizes your enemies afterwards, and you guys guessed it, you can proc Power Lash, and each time you Power Lash, you get a really good burst heal as well. The next two abilities I want to go over are actually the ultimates in the DK kit. First of which being Ferocious Leap. This is an amazing ultimate. It acts as a gap closer, it acts as an AoE damage and stun. It's super cheap, and it gives you the overshield. So it kind of matches the class identity of the DK of the theme. The best offense is a really good defense. Next is Corrosive Armor. Corrosive Armor, again, <laughs> fitting into the same theme. It makes it to where you only take 3% of your maximum health as damage from any attack. So if someone hits you with an in cap or a frag or what have you, it's only going to hit you for 3% of your maximum health at best. In addition, you get 100,000 spell and physical penetration, virtually ignoring your enemy's raw physical and spell resistance, hitting them for pure damage 
like a truck. So if you need to close out those skills and go offensive, just pop corrosive. Not only are you super tanky, but you're going to put out hellacious damage as well. Okay, so if you made it this far, guys, we made it to the passive section. So some of the passes I'm going to go over are the most iconic for the DK and probably some of the most busted passives in the game, in all honesty. So the very first passive we want to go over, I'm going to talk in length about is Combustion. Now, what Combustion does is that it increases your the damage you're burning in poison effects. Cool, that's awesome. But when you apply a burning or a poison stats effect, you restore 100 Magicka and Stamina, respectively. This can occur every 0.5 seconds. The combustion passive alone is enough to sustain the DK. Plus, with the recent changes to charge, charge is by far one of the best traits you can ever run on the DK because it does amplify your chances to apply these effects by 480%. It's an absolute must on any mag DK, in my opinion. And one of the best things about the mag DK, you do not have to push high magicka recovery, unlike some classes like the sorcerer, where if you get caught with below 2000 magic recovery you'll run into sustain issues the dk is not that so the next passive i want to go over is the battle royal passive and in my opinion is the best passive of any class in eso let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments so when you cast an ultimate ability you restore 51 health 50 magicka and 50 stamina for each point of ultimate use now, I don't even have to begin to explain to you guys why this is absolutely amazing. There are so many ways to abuse this passive, such as you can run minor heroism, which gives you ultimate, you can run major heroism buffs, which give you ultimate, you can run sets such as blood spawn, which give you ultimate, and then you have the decisive trait. Anytime you get ultimate, you have a chance to get more. You guys kind of see what kind of trend I'm going into. I've ridden builds before to where I can drop a DK battle standard inside a BK battle standard inside another DK battle standard. So unlike any other class, the DK does not have to rely on super high regeneration. We get most of our sustain from the combustion passive and also the battle war passive. And if you make a build that specs into either of these, you will have no problems dominating people on your DK. The last passive I want to go over as an honorable mention is Iron Skin. So Iron Skin increases the damage you can block by 10%. Yeah, that's pretty underwhelming, but it kind of leads into the overall identity of the class. So Magic of Dragonite, do not forget guys, is a brawler type of build. So having any sort of block mitigation on the DK is more than invaluable. Some of the typical weapons you pair with the Magic of Dragonite are Inferno Staffs, Dual Will and Sword and Board. And Sword and Board probably being one of the most popular. And having this passive just to complement the DK class in general works really, really well for the class identity. Sure, there are other weapon combinations you can run for the Magic of Dragon Knight. You can even run Bow and get away with it. But those are some niche builds that I'm not going to cover in this video, but I may do at some point. Okay, so we've reached the battle tips and tricks section of the video. So this is where your boy Horcrux is going to mess up. And welcome to my humble abode in Cold Harbor, by the way. So what I'm going to be doing in this is showing you guys some basic combat tips for the DK and then some of the more advanced tips I've picked up over the years for the Mag DK. Before we even begin, though, add-ons are very important on the DK. I don't use a lot of them. Check out my UI. It's pretty blank, but one add-on I do use then if you're going to play DK, I recommend you do as well. It's called Buff Timers. Buff Timers allows you to add buffs, debuffs anywhere on your UI. You can customize the bars however you want. You can name them whatever you want, adjust the icons, what have you to suit your fancy. This is to help me better keep track of my own buffs while keeping track of debuffs on my opponent as well. You can even have announcers of when to reapply certain effects. And for example here, I actually have a kill them thing that pops up that tells me, hey, burning spell weave has proc. You can see it right here on my bar, burning spell weave is up. So that allows me to know when I need to time my burst. Okay, so with the add on out of the way, I just figured I would mention that to you guys. Again, it's called buff timers. It's a really, really good add on to have an absolute must in my opinion. So let's go over some of the basics on the mag DK. So my skill build here, I'm running Engulfing Flames, Fossilize, Talons, Flame Lash, Burning Embers, and Leap. We're not going to worry too much about the back bar, but your skill priority, Numero Uno, always have Burning Embers up on your target. Have Burning Embers up on as many people as you can. It's super cheap to cast, and also it's a 100% chance when you cast it to 
inflict them with the burning sass effect, which gives you 1,000 magicka back. So effectively, this ability is only costing you 1,200 magicka. The burst seal is insane. The dot damage is insane. So when you're getting outnumbered, please have this up on as many people as possible. Because again, anytime it gets purge, or the target dies, or the buff falls off, you get healed. Okay? So that's priority number one. Now, priority number two is going to be engulfing flames. Typically, what I try to do is land a burning embers first. If I'm not able to land a burning embers first, I will typically run up in talons. Now, what talons does, it does a huge ass AoE root, okay? This allows you, especially if you're on control, if you're on mouse and keyboard, you can have a lot easier time hitting your engulfing flames, which we will go over in just a moment. But Burning Talons is a nice, easy way to just root a bunch of people and for you to be able to get your bearings straight. Now, if you already have Burning Embers up on the target, typically Talons, whenever you can, off CC cooldown. And what Talons does, it roots them to where you can aim your engulfing. Engulfing is, is, is kind of silly sometimes. Like, even when I aim it right here, it misses, right? So, actually, it hits him though. It's a pretty, pretty decent cone. But even right there, it missed. So, engulfing flames can be a little buggy sometimes. So, that's why Talons really comes in clutch. Talons also immobilizes them. And this procs the off balance status effect. So, that means your power lashes, guys. If you recall from before, you're going to able to power lash, and power lash, and power lash, dealing a metric shit ton of damage and also healing yourself in the process. So it doesn't matter who Talons is on, like if unless everyone roll dodges out of Talons, yeah, you can just look at someone like behind you here. I'm like, oh, he's still Talons. Well, you can power lash, get a nice seal when you need it. It's very important on the DK to stay on the offensive as much as you can. Okay, as soon as you start getting on your back bar and backpedaling, DK has some really expensive skills, especially coagulating blood, which is your only kind of oh shit heal and it's really not even that good it, it's only really effective when you drop below like 50 percent if, you, if you're just trying to use this to top off your health that's not a good habit to get into you only want to use this when you drop below 50 percent health any other time that you are above 50 percent health guys you need to reapply burning embers for a heal you need to try to get some power lashes off you need to possibly pop cauterize which is an amazing ability and the dk skit as well it heals you and someone else. It's pretty cheap to cost. Plus, it gives you a uh, crit chance on your back bar from bar, wh wherever you have it slotted. So, rule of thumb, if you're below 50%, use Coag. If you are above 50%, you need to heal some other way. You're not a puss-puss class. You can keep up the pressure. Trust me, guys. So, again, we'll just kind of reiterate the skill priority. Burning Embers, have this up on as many people as you can. Engulfing Flames should always be on your targets because it increases your overall damage done by any flame ability by 10% and then Talons. So Talons is a very niche, it, it's hard to use Talons correctly sometimes because it requires you to get a feel for the situation that you're in. Talons has a very limited range so you can't really spam this too much. I think it has like a 7 meter range. See it doesn't hit old Frank over here that far away. And it's very very expensive to cast so the more and more you play on the Magic of Dragon Knight you'll figure out when it's best to cast Talons. So let's get into the next section. Kind of the advanced tips and tricks I have for you guys. So on the DK Obviously buff, debuff management, it's important to keep everything up, keep track of the buffs and debuffs on your opponent, however you see fit. But there are some burst tactics. So on the DK, you don't really have a lot of burst. You have a lot of sustained pressure. Yes, you have your leap, but that's nowhere near the burst compared to a Night Blade's in cap into Spectral Bow or a Sork's Frag execute curse combo, right? So you need to figure out a way to land your bursts consistently. So the best way you guys can do this when you're targeting someone, I know this is kind of hard to do on target dummy, but it's actually harder to do on people in real life. I'm actually trying to do a tutorial live, right? So with that being said, tip number one, guys, obviously have your burning embers up. When you fossilize anyone, when you fossilize anyone, if burning embers is not up for the love of God, use burning embers. Because what's going to happen is you're going to fossilize them. You're going to try to attack them, right? They're going to immediately roll dodge. That's just everyone's intrinsic way of dealing with a DK. Just break free roll dodge. So you're going to fossilize burning embers. What this does, this allows you to get 
burning embers on them before they're able to roll dodge. Even if they do roll dodge away, you can hit them with engulfing flames in the roll dodge because it's a cone ability. So the most effective way to get all of your abilities on your opponent is if you can, lead off with talons. If not, fossilize, burning embers, and then engulfing flames. And then that should give you enough time to have all your dots up on your opponent. And then you can go through another two rotations of CC immunity and not have to reapply your dots until like the third fossilize. Now, an advanced tip I want to show you guys is, okay, you have your dots up, very cool. So what you want to do with talents, this is why it's such a good ability. Not only does it synergize really well with Power Lash, but if you talent someone, everyone's instinct is always going to be roll dodge what most people do not know is you can get a double cc and what i mean by that is you can talons them they will roll dodge if you catch them in their roll dodge with a fossilize not only does it you know stun them because it's undodgeable unblockable but it roots them again they do not get the CC or the, the, the crowd control immobilization immunity if you do it in this order. So, talents, right now you have a power lash up right now. So, typically you can power lash as they're roll dodging. You fossilize them again. And, of course, if you have your dots up, which you always show on the DK, they're going to be immobilized again, which means you can power lash yet again, keeping up the damage and the heals. So, their only choice to do is to roll dodge again. So... With two abilities, essentially, Talons and Fossilize, you've caused them to break free and roll dodge twice. That's a huge, huge hit on their stamina economy. And such a good habit to get into that most EKs I see don't do it in this order. It's such a good habit to get into. And of course, this does vary from opponent to opponent. Some people kind of wait out the immobilization, but gets in the habit of Talons, apply your dots, whatever, while they're standing there. As soon as you think they're going to roll dodge, Fossilize. And that is going to turn your game up so, so much more, fellas. Okay, guys, so the last part of the video, I'm just going to clear up some misconceptions on what champion points buff what abilities. We're going to leave the green and the red tree alone. So let's go ahead and start with Deadly Aim. Now, Deadly Aim says that it increases your damage done with single target attacks by 2% per stage. This increases your dot damage across the board. This also increases the damage of your whip. That is all. Biting Aura increases the damage done with area effects by 2%. This, So what this does, it increases the in initial hit of Engulfing Flames, the initial hit of Talons, and also your Leap. Master at Arms increases the damage done with direct damage attacks by 2% per stage. This only buffs your Whip and also your Leap. That is all. Surprisingly enough, this does not buff your dot damage. This also increases the initial hit damage of your burning embers, but uh, it doesn't really do enough damage to really matter. And Thaumaturge, so this increases your dot damage of all your abilities, but this does not increase the damage over time, or excuse me, the initial hit effects of engulfing flames, talons, or burning embers. So I hope that clears it up a little bit. So that about does it for the Magic Dragon Knight, you guys. Please consider giving the channel a like and sub if you found any of this information helpful. I will be uploading much more Dragon Knight content in the future, so please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you want to take a step further and support the channel, I also have a Patreon with very cheap tiers, a lot of which include PvP coaching in the Discord. So if you are curious about getting better at PvP or just want some more one-on-one -on -one tips and tricks, please do so on my Patreon on my page and also link down in the description. If there's anything I missed, guys, please leave them down in the comments and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care. Peace.